Science on the Menu, a podcast by the European Food Safety Authority. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Science on the Menu. My name is James Ramsey, and today we're going to be talking about animal health, another animal health issue, actually. You may have uh, listened to the previous podcast we did on avian influenza. Today, we're going to be talking about another important animal disease, and that is African swine fever, or ASF. Uh, And to join us for this discussion, we have one of our animal health experts here today with us. Her name is Lena Moore. A very warm welcome to you, Lena. How are you? Very good, James. Uh, Very happy to be here with you. Great. Well, we're happy to have you too. Um, Let's start, Lena. Maybe just tell us a bit about yourself, um, your background in dealing with, uh, with African swine fever, and then we go from there. Perfect. So um, I am I'm a Spanish veterinarian, and uh, I guess I started working on with African swine fever when I was a still a vet student. And one of my uh, professors said, "Like, ah, would you like to do some research?" I said, "Why not?" And he mentioned this disease, and it sounds like Africa. Cool. Let's go <laughs> there. Uh, at that time, nobody cared a lot about the disease, so I started doing the PhD and travel around the world, saying that it's a, a real problem. Um, I got the opportunity to see Africa, Russia, and different settings. And then when I finished the PhD, I moved to the United States because I really wanted to try the research there. It's a, it's a different area. It's, it's totally different. And afterwards, um, I did some, some research there on vaccine risk assessment. I came back uh, in 2017 to Europe to work in the World Organization for Animal Health as epidemiologist. So I was analyzing data and doing reports and so on. And in 2021, I joined EFSA. I'm currently responsible of the African swine fever topics. Great, yeah. And you are a very important part of our team here for animal health. Maybe just um, to, to put a bit uh, into context what we're talking about here. So let, let's start at the beginning. You know, what is African swine fever? It's got the name, uh, obviously, you can guess that it comes maybe from a certain continent uh, way back when, but maybe you just explain a bit of the history of the disease uh, and what it is. So um, African swine fever is a viral disease that affects swine, wild and domestic pigs. So from the phacocarus, uh, this is the African wild sweet that you can see in the movies, Mm -hmm. to the wild boar and the pigs. But the good news is that it doesn't affect humans or other animal species. So it's a virus that affects pigs. It is called African swine fever because there was a long time ago, it was another swine fever that was affecting the pigs and the pigs were dying. But it was just in 1921 when they brought um, white pigs to Africa, to Kenya. The pigs are starting to die and they say, what happens here? And that's when they decided to call it African swine fever. Okay, to distinguish it somehow from from the classical, classical swine fever. Okay, um, so it affects pigs. Importantly, uh, it's not uh, it do- doesn't have an effect on on human health. It's a serious disease, though, isn't it? And and can have very um, very grave consequences for for pig populations. So just explain a little bit about um, I mean the types of symptoms and and what happens in the end uh, if the disease is present. Yeah, actually, it's a it's a very nasty disease. Sometimes it has been uh, compared to the Ebola in animals because uh, really the rates of mortality of the pigs that got infected in the acute um, form, it can go to 97%. So sometimes you go to the farm, one day they are okay, and the next day you have three pigs dead. So you don't actually see even the fever. That's why it was called fever. Mm. So you can see sudden death, high fevers, the pigs are starting feeling bad bleeding from the nose or with the feces. And um, and from there, everything goes bad. Abortions and all sort of distress that uh, that can cause the virus. Okay, so, so, I mean, very serious consequences ultimately leading in many cases to, to death. So... Um, and I guess you know, from a from a kind of uh, a farming perspective, or even if you're you know you just have small holdings, whatever it may be, uh, that can have a big uh, impact on on you know the, the the animals that you keep because effectively it can wipe out the whole a whole herd of animals uh, exactly. very quickly. Yeah, it has kind of two consequences. The first is like if uh, it gets there, you will lose your herd, but then is one of these diseases that are controlled by international organizations and in general. You cannot 
leave them spread like that. So there are rules that we say, if you have the disease, I'm very sorry, but we will need to kill your pigs and destroy the product. So that meaning you can have, you could have been raising your pigs for, I don't know, X months, whatever, and then you lose all that. So it's not only the direct effect of the, vis- the virus killing the animals, but also the control policies that you will need to kill the affected ones or the ones that have been also in contact. So there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of losses there. The economical impact of the disease is huge, definitely. Yeah, and that's something that is um, that has affected uh, the situation, obviously, in, in the European Union as well. I mean, we read a lot about the economic impact of African swine fever on on trade, uh, on the farming industry. Maybe we use that just to, to bridge to EFSA's role here. So um, can you just explain a little bit more about the kind of uh, work we're, we're involved with there? EFSA has played a crucial role, I think, since African swine fever got into the European Union in 2014. Because there were so many things that we didn't know about the virus that the commission needed to regulate and they didn't know what to do. So what EFSA has been doing since then is to help support the European Commission providing scientific and technical advice on this uh, topic. During the past years, there were tons of uh, reports and opinions saying which is the role of the wild boar, what can we do to prevent it, and so on. Now, currently, our um, our job or how we are supporting the commission is mainly by two different types of outcomes. We are producing annual reports where we evaluate how is the disease going, if a country is doing better or worse. The situation is we have a specific cluster of or a point where we need to pay attention on. And then we have every two years this um, risk factor analysis where we have a um, deeper insight in certain areas. So we are now trying to select a region and say, okay, which is the role of the density of the wild boar in this region? How we can then take some conclusion that can help the European Commission to provide guidelines or legislate. So that's what we are doing currently. Okay. Um, so it's a kind of it's a it's a monitoring role in in many senses. We're trying to keep a track of what's happening, the ep- epidemiology of the the disease, the, the way it's evolving. Um, and this is uh, so, so we base that on data we we are provided by the member states, I presume. Exactly, we have um, part of our mandate is to collect information that the countries have on African swine fever. So we are collecting from them the information from the laboratory directly and it's not only member states interestingly also the neighboring countries are uh, providing us data because they want to contribute and and to provide that uh, information to us Mm -hmm. so they'll support us with the laboratory data with the peak population data and that's what help us to evaluate how the disease is going on and what can we recommend to the commission etc so can you talk a little bit uh, now lena about um how we are where we are with ASF in, in the EU, because it's only relatively recently that we, we've been talking about this or it's risen up the you know scientific political agenda. It's quite recent. It's, until 2007, ASF was mostly located in the Africa and on the island of, of Sardinia, that is an Italian island. But in uh, 2007, it was discovered in uh, Georgia, presumably brought by some products infected from Africa. And from there, gradually, it had continued spreading in neighboring countries, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Russia, mostly through wild boar. So from 2007 until 2014, the disease was only on those non-European Union countries. But 2014 was when firstly got detected in the Baltics. And from there, unfortunately, it has spread to Poland, uh, the east part of uh, Germany, Czech Republic, we have also Bulgaria, Hungary, Slovakia, uh, north of Greece infected. And I think one big point is that in 2018, the disease moved to other continents. So it was when it entered into China, and from there, a lot of Asian countries have been affected. We have Philippines, Vietnam, Korea, and they are dealing with similar problems with pigs and wild boar infected non-control, we don't have a vaccine right now. And finally, it was 2021 when the disease uh, got introduced in the Americas. It is in Dominican Republic and IT, and of course that poses a huge risk for the neighboring countries. So we can say that nowadays it's a worldwide problem, and uh, the whole veterinarian community is very aware of that. But if we talk about 10 years ago, 
before it got into the European Union, nobody a knew or a different story. Yeah. So you talk about the importance of uh, awareness raising there, uh, Lena, and, and maybe that um, allows us to to bridge to the campaign that we're running at the moment, which you're you're obviously involved with as well. Um, the campaign is called Stop ASF, so Stop African Swine Fever. It's something we launched uh, four years ago now. Uh, and this is an information campaign uh, aimed at uh, specific target audiences, particularly vets, farmers uh, and hunters. And the aim there really is to to raise awareness about the disease. And we talk in terms of three key areas. So uh, detect, prevent and report. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, the campaign and, and what we're trying to achieve with that? Definitely. So I think it's a it's a, it's a great campaign. I, to be honest, I was very happy when I joined EFSA and I, I learned about what you were doing in terms of communication, because I think you are really trying to to change the behavior of the people. So you are sending clear messages, or we are sending clear messages that is uh, detect the disease. So we are providing some pictures and some examples and say, if you're a farmer and you see your pigs dying or with uh, this sort of lesions. This could be ASF. So that's um, the first message. If you see a dead wild boar, that could be ASF. And for the veterinarians, we kind of refresh their minds because you are meant to study that in the in the vet school. The second message is a report. So um, what we want is to try to make an early detection so the measures can be taken as soon as possible. We the message is there is as you can see as you see something that can be ASF please call your official vet or go to the um, hunters association go to the official uh, representatives that are meant to control the disease and the third message is try to help us preventing the spread of the disease so if you're a farmer you can always need to disinfect yourself the boots leave your clothes outside do not visit other farms. If you bring another animal, put it isolated. Try to avoid always wild boar around your farm. Have a good fence. And a bit similar with the wild boar uh, hunters. If you have been hunting wild boars, please be aware and do not go into a pig farm afterwards. Do not move the offals. Do not move the the products and until the official bed has come and say they are good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you mentioned it's been a success. It it really has. And um, I mean, it is an EFSA campaign in some senses, but it relies very much on the contribution from our partners in the member states, but also in this case, uh, given the specific uh, kind of distribution of the disease in, in, in Europe. Uh, we also work closely with pre-accession countries, um, many, uh, in fact, uh, over the over the period of the last four years. Um and it's it's an interesting model. It's a kind of it has this sort of centralized approach where we uh, you know develop uh, content and, and messages uh, at the EFSA level, and then work very much with our partners uh, in the member states, as I say, um, to distribute the information, reach out to stakeholders at the local level. So um, yeah, if you're interested in finding out more about the Stop ASF campaign, you can find it quickly via any search engine. If you just uh, type in Stop ASF or from uh, from EFSA's website. So if that's something of interest to you, do do check it out. Okay, Lena, maybe just looking forward a little bit. So we've talked about what EFSA does, what the current situation is now. What are the next steps for uh, you know public authorities, European Commission, EFSA, in dealing with this uh, this disease? I mean, presumably we're looking for you know a, a solution, if you like, a, a way of eradicating the disease altogether. And, and how close or far away are we from achieving that? Yeah, I guess uh, we're in a similar situation of the first months of COVID when everybody was talking about vaccine, 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 and we couldn't see it yet. Uh, so um, in the case of ASF, a vaccine could be great, of course. That's what uh, a good vaccine and safe vaccine that can be used on the field for controlling the disease in wild boar is, is what we need. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have one yet, but uh, big improvements have been done in the area. We need to consider that African swine fever has been kind of a neglected disease, it has been on the African continent and it came to Europe during the 60s, 70s, but it was eradicated in all Europe except Sardinia, where it uh, it is still present, but it's, it's getting better. So um, since 1995 until 2007, it was mostly an African disease. There was not much money invested, not much research put on it. 
while other diseases, even influenza, foot and mouth disease, classical swine fever, there were big bodies pushing for that. So they have good diagnostic tools and good vaccines. In ASF, we are a bit delayed. Mm-hmm. And, and that's partially caused also by the um, complex structure of the virus. So this is a huge virus. It's so big that um, in terms of size can be a bacteria that uh, for the normal population doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you mean the virus, the, the physical size of the virus? The is physical big. size okay. of the virus is huge. Okay. And what it implies is that it has a lot of proteins. So it's a very, very complex virus. We hear about the spike protein in COVID. And the people became experts on what protein. Mm-hmm. African swine fever has more than 100 structural proteins. So you can imagine that it's a it's, it's super uh, complex virus. So to target that virus and to create a vaccine is very, very difficult because it's an expert on avoiding and escaping the, the immune system. So I think there are two components. One, we have not invested enough money and research on it. And second is kind of a very, very complex uh, pathogen that we need to learn how to deal with it. But you, you say there are that there's hope for the future somehow. I mean, there is uh, some progress, uh, scientific progress made on, on developing new uh, new ideas for, for vaccines or new pr- protocols for vaccines. How to, what, what's in the pipeline? So we have several lines that are working pretty well. And uh, there are several approaches. We have attenuated uh, vaccines. That means it's a virus that for naturally, but then, in the lab, you also make it less virulent. So you kind of kill the virus mm-hmm. to make it less virulent. I put it into an animal, and then when I put the real virus, you are protected. And there are other groups working, for example, in removing, deleting specific genes that they know they are pathogenic. So um, groups have been working on both lines uh, for a long time, but now is when we are starting seeing positive results. So there are even some countries in Asia at the moment, it's only Vietnam, but uh, they have authorized the use of uh, some vaccines produced by USA in the national labs, and it is they are doing the field uh, work. So we need to wait a bit mm-hmm. in terms of how things are going. Other work in wild boar in, in Europe is quite promising. So we are in kind of an exciting moment where from now to the following years, I think we'll see, or I hope that we see big breaks in the vaccine that research okay let's uh well let's hope that becomes a reality in the meantime here at EFSA obviously we continue our important work on the monitoring uh, and the risk assessment Uh, and with that Lena I think um I think that probably brings us to an end of this conversation thank you very much for being with us here today thanks to you James it has been a real pleasure To all our listeners, if you're interested in finding out more about this topic, please do check out our website. Uh, I mentioned the campaign already, the communications campaign we're running. It's called Stop ASF. You can find that too um, just by by going to our website. Uh, And otherwise, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Science on the Menu. Thank you very much and goodbye.